The following is a Candlepin Stars and Strikes rebroadcast featuring some of our most memorable programs. Open stars and strikes. Look at this. Look at this. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is sponsored in part by Summerville Lumber. Looks good. Got a good set. That's the girl. It's a girl. Candlepin Stars and Strikes is produced in conjunction with the New Hampshire Candlepin Bowling Association. And now your hosts, Doug Brown and Dan Burton. Hi, everybody, and welcome once again to Park Place Lanes here in Wyndham. And another week of Candlepin Stars and Strikes. Of course, two full hours of Candlepin Bowling coming up. Our first uh, hour, of course, will be our semifinals in our annual Mixed Doubles Tournament. Dan Murphy? Yes, sir, and uh, we had some exciting matches the last couple weeks. And uh, we've got four bowlers now that... Uh, should be see some of the same, I imagine. All right, let's meet them. First of all, our number three seeded team. They were the winners last week from Nashua, New Hampshire, Joe Ashline, and his partner from Templeton, Massachusetts, Wendy Sandin. Okay, and Joe comes in averaging 127. His roll-off score, 715. Wendy Sandin at 115 and 592. And last week, they rolled an outstanding 386 in a very tight match, winning over Larry Valcourt and Debbie Regan, 386 to 375. So now uh, Joe and Wendy will try and make it two in a row, and they'll face our number two-seeded team from Hudson, New Hampshire, Mike Poulin, and his partner from Derry, New Hampshire, Louise Hamilton. Okay, Mike comes in averaging 125, roll-off score getting right up there now at 738. And Louise Hamilton at 116 and 633. All right, the uh, runner-up team uh, this afternoon will split third-place prize money of $250. We're also going to have our bonus ball contest again. We had another winner last week. It seems like we've had a lot of winners lately, so we hope we have your postcards. If not, we'll tell you how to do that, and we'll get this match started right after we take these messages. Don't go away. Well, we have been uh, moving along here in our mixed double series. Here's how the bowlers got here. They enter separately in men's and women's roll-offs. Here was the, uh, the final total for the men's roll-off series. See uh, Mike Poulin, who's here today with 738, just one pin behind our number one seed, Peter Flynn. As for the women, Louise Hamilton, who comes in today as uh, Mike's partner at 633, just two pins behind our top seed, Nancy Hunt. So, of course, next week... Nancy Hunt and Peter Flynn will be our number one seeded team, and they will face the winners of this match. And this match will start with Joe Ashline as we uh, move into the semifinals. Joe was just unstoppable last week. In 16 boxes, he had 12 marks. Including a couple of spectacular spare shots absolutely he made some great shots as he said in the interview scary shots <laughs> he made a couple scary shots <laughs> now he's looking at the triangle no joe not happy with that miss and a 10 box Joe Ashline is already into the Tri-State Megabucks Doubles Tournament of Champions, as is Gary Carrington. In fact, they're entered together. And Joe bounces back with a nine, uh, rather an eight drop. I'm sure he wishes it were a nine drop. Instead, it's the seven and the ten. I thought it was going to be nine. I thought that seven pin was going to go. Seven, ten, and all kinds of wood in front of the seven pin. And I imagine this wood's going to fly around a little bit. Not enough, though. Joe and Gary rolled a 407. 
And uh, as of right now, they are the top seeded team for the Stars and Strikes Doubles Tournament of Champions with two qualifying teams still to come. Here's Mike Poulin now. Mike, of course, has been with us many times. Been with us this season, in fact. Four horsemen left for Mike. No. Can't hit it much better than that without making it. Left just the seven pin. All tens so far. Ooh, got a slide on the uh, four pin, but it didn't go. Let's see. Well, he covered the tough pin, but the pin that slid over, out of position. Can't help thinking he probably would have made that shot if it was on the spot. But perfect so far. More tens. Now here comes Wendy Sandin, who stepped up for her final two boxes last week and rolled two big marks. And didn't want to sit down. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> two, seven, nine, uh, seven, eight, and ten. And after she rolled those two big marks, Joe Ashline put one right after it, and that clinched their victory. How about this one? Yes. Wendy Sandin starts this week with a mark. Well, last week was the first time in front of the lights, and she said she was nervous. And threw two marks her last two frames, and today she opens up with, with a mark and gets only three. Nine box, 42 through four. Now here's Louise Hamilton, and Louise Hamilton is half of the defending champion team in our mixed doubles. Last year when we had our annual series, Louise was paired with John Maffio, and they combined for three consecutive wins to uh, win the series. And they were very, very consistent, too. They rolled a 383, then a 384, and a 381 to win it. And the last string they rolled that third week was a 150 to clinch their victory. A 10 for Louise. All 10s so far for the team of Poulin and Hamilton. So uh, Louise is a perfect 3-0 and here on Stars and Strikes, those three shows last year. Nice effort. Very nice, just leaves the 4-7. And another 10 box, four in a row for the team. And they trail by only two. Joe Ashline. Ooh, firing hard, but right through the heart. I really, I hurt for those pins sometimes. <laughs> Some full, he just crunches the back like that. That, that has to hurt. <laughs> well, Joe always throws the ball hard, but there are just some times, and it seemed this way both last weekend and so far here today, that he's just throwing even harder than he normally does. That's tough for him to do, <laughs> I think.
Last week, the team of Ashline and Sandon had 14 marks on the way to their 386, and a chance for one here, although it's the three and the nine. The help may be the nine pin is off the spot or the three pin is off the spot. I don't know which one it is, but that may help. Yep. First spare for Joe, second for the team. Mike Poulin. And I faded that one a little bit to the right, pulling it a bit. Looked like he was really off balance at the point of release with that ball. One, two, four, and eight left for Mike. Punches the head pin out. A little work here if he wants to keep the string of uh, ten boxes alive. Nope. Leaves the eight pin. Solid five pin. Nothing touched it. Spare for Mike Poulin to match the spare for Joe Ashline. First mark for the team. And now Wendy Sandin to throw that fill ball on the spare left by her partner. Just five. One, three, six, and the seven, eight in the back row. No wood to help, Wendy. No, oh, what? How about that shot? Didn't need it. Oh, oh. <laughs> That's a terrific shot. Another look. Right there, and eight, and finally the seven. The interesting thing, the head pin actually went right between the seven and the eight. It was one of the other pins that kicked over to take out the two in the corner. And she goes right through the middle. One, five, and nine out of there. Just three on the spear. Oh! oh mercy! <laughs> oh, Wendy turned around with a surprised look on her face on that one. <laughs> There's a situation where you cut something in, and if you don't cut it sharp enough, you have a chance of hitting, like in that case, the seven pin or the four pin, and everything coming back. And it's exactly what Wendy did. What a shot. How about those two spares back to back? Eight fill for Louise Hamilton on the spare left by Mike Poulin. And the spare for Louise. Should mention that Louise is uh, kind of battling a sprained right ankle, but uh, she actually rolled through it in the final roll off, and that 633 score told me uh, in another competition after that she rolled another pretty good score. So I guess she's gotten used to it. So everybody's out trying to turn their ankle. I said, so what are you going for now? A second sprained ankle? <laughs> But I think uh, she was right in analyzing it before the match. She told me that, well, it's, it's not my slide foot. If it were her slide foot, then it would be a little bit different. But it's her right foot. And that's the foot that takes the least amount of pressure on the approach, usually, for a right-hander. Well, the trainer just taped her up, and she's in the game. That's right. <laughs> Keep me in, coach. Joe Ashline now working on a spare left by Wendy Sandin, and a rather spectacular one it was. No, yeah. oh, and he punches through the middle. Same leave. Well, his partner showed him how to do it. This should be automatic. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe he wants uh, Wendy to shoot it for him. <laughs> nope. Uh, he wasn't watching Wendy. <laughs> The match is tied right now through eight frames. Joe has to settle for a seven. 99 through nine. Back-to-back -back three fills for the team of Ashline and Sand, and that is costly. Joe right back on the head pin, needs to carry one, and he does. Carried two, actually. 
the most important one was that five pin going down and leaves himself just the four seven piece of wood out in front and he is going to punish this piece of wood <laughs> listen <laughs> yeah <laughs> spare an attempt uh, phil is are really going to come back to haunt them i've had four marks three fills on three of them and a five fill And a five. Wow. wow, three threes and two fives. A full house. 114 for the team of Ashline and Sandon. Mike Poulin. Well, the one and the two left for Mike for a spare. And he covers it. That could give his team the lead after one game. Depending on what he does here in the 10th. Well, that'll do it. That will do it for certain. 122 plus two balls to come on this big strike. That was a quickie. They've only had four marks, three spares, and a strike, but the difference is an eight fill, a five fill, and then a ten fill on the spare, and this is the fill on the strike, so they've done considerably better with the fills, and thus the lead. And it's a nine for a 131 for the team of Poulin and Hamilton. They take the lead by 17 after game one. We'll be back with the middle game and more details on our bonus ball contest in a minute. Louise Hamilton leading it off here in game two. Team of Hamilton and Poulin left one pin standing that first game at one nine box. Everything else ten or better. Eight box for Louise. Of course we tape our show here, our noon show, Candlepin Stars and Strikes, right here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. And when you come down here, either for a taping or to do your own bowling, you want to be sure and stop into the Willow Tree Restaurant, right here inside Park Place Lanes. Terrific food, great service, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. All served up by Rodney and his friendly staff. Be sure and say hello when you come in. The Willow Tree Restaurant here at Park Place Lanes in Wyndham. And Louise Hamilton doesn't get the break on the seven pin. By the way, before we go any farther, Dan, I want to uh, wish everybody a happy Valentine's Day. And above and beyond that, a happy birthday to my big sister, Karen. All right, Karen. And I'll, and I'll be in big enough trouble just saying big sister, so I'm not <laughs> going to go any farther than that. I'm not going to get into ages or any of that stuff. She takes enough grief from, for being a Valentine's Day baby, I think. <laughs> Wendy Sandin looking at the one, three, six, and eight with a piece, couple of pieces of wood in between. That should be easy, the last couple of shots she's made. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe, let's see, no, too full on the head pin. Ten bucks. Last week, Ashline and Sandin led by 42 after the first game. This week, they trail by 17. 
Well, that's a nice setup if you're going to be left with those two pins, the two and the eight. Now, there is a piece of wood kind of attached. Well, not attached now, but you're just afraid that it might spray, Spin but it away. looks like, yeah, we'll have Ooh, to see. Just going too far left. Oh, oh it took just it. enough. Enough forward drive on that front piece of wood to carry it through. Let's see if it was that first piece of wood that took the... Yeah, it was. Just enough to drive it back. Mark number six for Ashline and Sandin already. Mike Poulin now on lane 32. This week, this week, most of the marks coming off the ball of uh, Wendy so far. Four of them. Twenty-eight through three for Mike Poulin and Louise Hamilton. Mike has to settle for an eight. 36 through four for the team and an opportunity here for Joe Ashline working on a mark. Plus two open frames. Big problem for the team so far has been Phil's. They've had nothing bigger than a five. I'm sure Joe is gonna try and correct that here and he gets six. The diamond, three, five, six, and nine in the back. Nope. Nine bucks. They've shaved seven pins off the lead. It's now ten. Next week, our championship match. Both shows, of course. Here at noon, it'll be the championship of mixed doubles, and then at 1 o'clock, it'll be the championship of ladies' doubles. Here on the wins, that's next Sunday, beginning at 12 noon. This is an interesting shot. Um, Joe will carry him the ball off the wood to take the five. Now, whether the wood will come out of the channel for the s six and ten, let's see. Yes. Nice shot by Joe Ashline. We'll get another peek at that one, and we'll take a little break. We'll be right back. Don't go away. Louise Hamilton, set to go, box number five. This match just about even. Louise is the only returning bowler from last year's mixed doubles event. Mentioned she was uh, on the eventual championship team along with John Maffio. No, oh, Louise took care of the four horsemen, but left the nine in the back. And a blocker there, nine bucks. Good. Oh. And it's the nine pin again. Doesn't want to go down. Moved it off its spot a little bit. Slid it over, but... Second straight box, a pretty good shot. But the nine pin robbed her of spares both times. This time a ten. And an open door for Wendy Sandin. Of course, working on a mark left by Joe Ashline. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, nice looking pocket ball. Six on the fill. Well, you got to come up high to carry the, the eight pin, but if you're too high, you won't carry the ten. If you're too low, you'll get the ten and leave the eight. Oh, yes. Oh, right on the red line and oh, carry yes. them all. That was made it look a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. She was right on the red line. Just enough to carry everything. Eight spares for the team. And this time the fill ball a little off, just four. They've come all the way back, though, to take the lead, at least temporarily. See what Wendy elects to do here with the one, four, and seven on the third ball. She's going to go for all of them and takes nine. So Ashline and Sandin now lead by two. Much like last week, back and forth, the teams traded the lead. Oh, Mike Poulin right there in the pocket carried the four pin for the strike. Just a little tap on the four pin. First mark of the game for the team. Looking for the double. No, through the middle. Spread eagle. Just to try and get as much as he can on this fill, he'll take seven. Mike from Hudson, New Hampshire, works as a salesman for Metropolitan Life. He and his wife Judy have uh, three sons, Stephen, Tommy, and David. Mike does a lot of his bowling at the Lunnary Bowling Center. And after that strike and the nine box, 81 through eight for the team. Joe Ashline, boy, just laid that one down quietly. <laughs> Until it got to the pins, at least. It looked like he was going to be left with a 6, 7, 10, too. And then finally Wood came over and knocked out both the, f the 4 and the 7. And that Wood has very slowly rolled back into a nice position, covering the 10 pin for the spare. Well, that is the ninth spare for Sandin and Ashline, and they're still waiting for their first fill of more than 6. The odds are swinging in their favor. I would say so. <laughs> Seven. Two, four, six. No wood. Ooh. The eight box, or rather the nine box. We're an even 100 through eight. Maintains a two pin advantage. Now Louise Hamilton, a little thin and look out. Five, seven, nine, and ten. With wood though. And more wood coming. What do you think? Well, I'd like to probably go high, but she's probably going to go red line and have everything come off both side walls. Yeah. Yes! <laughs> Had the wood come off one side wall, and I don't know if the ball did any damage at all. Let's see. Yes, the ball took the seven pin. Good shot by Louise. Spare in the ninth. Pulled the fill a little bit. Taking four. And no. And Louise will take a nine, a 104, and a two game total, 235. And now Wendy Sandin. Oh, 
just kept uh, clipping the head pin. Three, six, ten, and the eight. Piece, a couple pieces of wood in front of the eight. He's got to be thinking three pin. Little oh back. yes! Oh, oh boy! Oh. <laughs> oh, that's unbelievable. The double piece of wood cost of the shot. Just nudged the eight pin, moved it a little bit, but wasn't able to knock it down, and has to settle for the ten. Let's take another look. A little light on the three pin. Goes to the sidewall, comes back, and look at that. Move that eight pin. Tough break. This time just slipping by the head pin, and now she'll have the four horsemen plus the seven. Wood moving in. Nope, just slipping by. And now the high-low jack. And it'll be a seven box. A 117 for the team, a two game total 231. So just four pins the difference. One of these teams will move into the finals next week. We'll have game three in a minute. Joe Ashline testing the approach, getting ready to start game three. Another close match. All of these matches uh, in this series have been <laughs> very, very tight. Seen some terrific bowling. And Joe is right through the middle for the spread eagle. Takes the right side. Peter Flynn and Nancy Hunt await the winners of this match in championship week next Sunday. Well, Joe will shoot at the four horsemen this time. Wants that piece of wood to either get in tight against the three or out of the way. This is going to deaden the ball and the head pin if he hits it because it's right behind. No, nope, yep. enough to get it by. Covered it perfectly. Mark number 10, all spares for the team of Ashline and Sandin. They just haven't been able to put very many of them together. Mike Poulin looking for a tap on the five pin and it will not go down. Sliding by the five pin on the right, getting just the nine. Talking about Peter Flynn next week. We're going to be seeing a lot of Peter Flynn uh, before this year is over. He has already qualified for both the singles and doubles tournament of champions. Qualified with Chuck Godzik for the doubles event just a few weeks back. Time the three and the six for Mike for a spare. Nope. Oh, it's two costly misses now and two pinners. Ones that Mike will usually convert. Well, Wendy Sandin steps up with a chance to give her team the lead in the match. That'll do it by two. Three, five, six, ten left for a spear. No, just missing.
Wendy for a nine. One of our participating sponsors for this mixed double series here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, our friends at Rockingham Toyota Dodge Nissan in Salem, New Hampshire. Come to Salem and save right on Route 28. Say hi to Emmett Horgan and the gang. Tell them you heard about them here on Stars and Strikes. Four horsemen left for Ken, uh, Wendy and that close. Tried to play it on the outside. And the 10. I'll tell you, the way this match is going, every one of those could be important. One of those single pins for 10 boxes. The difference in this match right now is just two. 10 pin. Not an easy shot. Double piece of wood blocking her. Well, it's rolling back a little bit. She may. No, I don't think she can see it. The 10 pin clear. Let's see. Gonna have to come off the wood. Yes. Ooh. The second uh, try, I think, that wood <laughs> went over there and got it. Let's see. Let's take a look. You hear the crowd kind of ooh and ah. Yep, second piece, or actually the front piece, which pushing it back towards the 10 pin was able to knock it down. Spare in the third. Now the fill, and the next looks like a pretty good ball, and it was. However, 9 10. Let's see where the wood settles down. Partner Mike Poulin's up taking a look at it. Well, he's getting a study on it too. Be interesting to see it. Well, you would think she's going to play the wood somewhere. It's just a question of where. She's going to be left of the red line. So she's trying. Yes. No, oh, nice shot. Two in a row. And that'll take us into a break with the team of Poulin and Hamilton retaking the lead as we go back and forth here on Stars and Strikes. We'll be back. Joe Ashline, box number five, game three. This match very much up for grabs here. And Joe with nothing fun to shoot at here. The three, four, six, and ten. Last week he made some spectacular shots. I'm surprised we can make this. Mm. Oh. Tried to cut the two pin into the... 6-10. And 8. At this point, they need something positive to happen. They haven't thrown a strike yet, which is unusual for Joe. <laughs> He'll have something to shoot at here. The three, five, and eight. Not as easy as it looks, though, with the eight pin in the back. Let's see. Oh, very nicely done. Right by the wood. I think he realized that playing the wood, you would have missed the eight pin unless it came back off the wall. And he got by the front piece and drove everything straight back. Great shot. Mike Poulin will fill the spear and increase the lead. Oh, just a three fill for Mike. That makes the lead 10 in the match. Trying to coax the seven pin over. Playing it inside, looking for the bounce, not quite. Ten bucks. So the lead now 12, but he's opposite a mark in the sixth. The runners up today split third place prize money, $250. The winners move on to next week's championship match. Two, seven, ten. Piece of wood in behind the two, angled toward the ten pin. 
No, but deflected the ball around the seven. So Karen, I mean Karen, Karen was a couple weeks ago, Dan, <laughs> Wendy will have a chance to fill the spare and get her team back into the match, down by just 12. Well, right about this spot was when Ashline and Sandin took over last week. In the last four boxes, they came up with some big shots. That'll be a six fill for Wendy. Cutting the lead to six. One, three, six, and the eight pin in the back for Wendy. It's good. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's a big shot. This is where she made two important shots last week. This time, just clipping the head pin, and the head pin stays in play to take out the eight. The 12th spare for the team in the match. Oh, she kicked the six pin out of there. And the four. And that, on those 12 spares, is their first fill higher than seven. And it comes at a very big spot. This is the type of shot you would like to have a ball more like Joe Ashline, so he can drive everything back. Yep, no problem. The ball actually came off the side to take the seven pin. And just like last week, Wendy Sandin <laughs> comes up with two huge marks in his last two boxes. She just saves it off for, last, for the last <laughs> few frames. Louise Hamilton. Diamond Leaf, three, five, six, nine. It really needs to convert one of these two boxes into marks. Not that one. Louise from Derry, New Hampshire. Works in Manchester at Kerry Clothing. Does a lot of her bowling right here at Park Place and also over at the Londonderry Bowling Center. She and her uh, husband David have four children, Sean, Julie, Bobby, and Chris. And Louise will move over now to lane 31 here at Park Place for her final box of the match with the team now trailing by three. Well, they'd like to give her partner Mike Poole and a mark to work on. And oh, how about that ball? Ooh. Oh, boy, 6-7. <laughs> a lot better than that. Now, this wood is rolling out. Well, you got to play the pin out front. It's got to go down and get the seven, come back across. Nope. So it'll come down to the final two again. Depending on what Joe does, Mike still may have a shot to win this match. The lead well, is four. Four plus, plus this first ball. So Joe can push it into double figures, which would mean Mike would need two marks. Oh, well, my. He's not going to push into double figures. Lead will be just seven. That is the fourth three fill they've had on a mark. And still no strikes, 13 spares. Well, Joe certainly wants the pin out. He doesn't want a bad frame here. The lead seven for Ashline and Sandin heading to the final two and it's an eight box for Joe Ashline. He's waiting it out, but it'll be an eight. Seven pins is the lead through eight boxes, and that means Joe would like nothing more than put a mark up to at least make mark uh, make Mike double mark in the last two. Right now he's just one mark separating both teams. And again through the middle. Oh, oh, we got a big break there when they kicked down the two pin. Well, but, but not a break there when the wood turned. It's got to come up high in the wood. Otherwise, you're going to leave the 10 pin. And, and he still there it is. 10 pin. You called it. No luck, Joe. No luck. Wow. Well, all these pins are important. Mike knows he needs a mark. 118. 349 for the team of Ashline and Sandin. So that means 
Mike Poulin has to get 115 to win the match, so he needs 26 pins. Which means he's got to have a mark somewhere. Hold on here. Hold on. Hold on. <laughs> These are all important pins because there'll be l less that he needs on the fill if he was to get a mark in the tenth. He can't leave anything standing, and he doesn't. All right, so it's a mark and a six. Rather, a six to tie. A mark and a seven to win. No, a mark and a six to tie is, to win is right. Mark and a six to win. 115. Oh, big first ball. He'll shoot at the two pin. Louise, <laughs> Louise can't watch. <laughs> Mike waiting for that wood to settle. This has got to be unnerving. And he's going to step away. He must get this shot to have a chance. He's right on it. Well, Louise will come back now and watch the fill ball. <laughs> That was the easy part. <laughs> We've seen a lot of three fills today. Needs a six to win. Six pins to win. Last ball of the match. That's enough. There it is. 116 for Poulin and Hamilton. 351. And they win it by two. We'll be back to talk about next week's finals in a minute. Candlepin Stars and Strikes, we're running a little bit short on time, but I want to uh, acknowledge the fine efforts of these two folks, Joe Ashline and Wendy Sandin, another uh, very, very close match, and uh, boy, you were able to take over at the end last week, and then this week just went the other way. Yeah, well, I picked out the 189 for a fill. It's kind of yeah. tough. I mean, it, you know, inch either way, it's a lot better fill than uh, yeah. that, so. Lots of marks, but uh, the fills actually were a problem all day, it seemed. Yeah, after... I don't know, with the first string, with those, all mm -hmm. those three fills and five mm -hmm. fills, that didn't help. Terrific uh, spares, but uh, uh, unfortunately not able to make them count probably as much as you would like. Well, third place money is $250, and uh, we hope to see you both again real soon. Thanks Thank very you. much. Yeah. Terrific match. Joe Ashline and Wendy Sandin. And now Mike Poulin for the bonus ball. We had a, uh, a winner last week, and so let's see if we can make it two in a row. $20 in the jackpot, three brand-new sets of bowling balls on the line. And Mike Poulin rolls five. Let's see about it, Mr. Murphy. Not a match for James Maloney. James Maloney of Fitchburg, guest six. So he'll be receiving a special gift from the NHCBA and from TV50. Had him all the way, right? Louise Hamilton and Mike Poulin, congratulations. Uh, that was a, now you just couldn't even bear to watch that last frame, could oh, you? Oh, I couldn't. <laughs> both, uh, both, uh, bowling terrifically well and, and able to come back and this was a terrific match back and forth and he answered the call there in the last two well they uh they joe was just punching out the uh the spread eagle in scratch doubles men's doubles you don't get into a rhythm like that it's just very easy to do that you know i think actually i'll bowl me i just we all pinned him here that's all. we got lucky we got lucky all right next week uh well we got a, a team coming in here peter flynn and, and nancy hunt who both rolled big scores in the roll-off so uh, they'll be looking forward to taking a shot at you they were tough to beat. We're going to have the ball well. We'll look forward to it. We'll see you next week. You. All right, Mike and Louise, congratulations. And uh, we'll chat with Dan Murphy here for a second as we bring you over to the ladder so you can uh, get a preview of what's to come. We're left with our top two seeded teams, and these were the bowlers that really had the uh, the big scores uh, in the roll-offs. Uh, Louise Hamilton and Nancy Hunt were the only two over 600 for the ladies, and uh, Peter Flynn and Mike Poulin were two of the three guys over 700 for the men, uh, Joe Ashline the other, but uh, we're left with our top two seated teams. That's right, um, and Nancy is our third uh, lady uh, on this series that just first time in front of the lights, so it's interesting to see that first time on TV. All right, championship week next Sunday beginning at 12 noon here on Stars and Strikes, but stay tuned because in just a few minutes after a break, we'll be back with Stars and Strikes doubles, semifinal match of our ladies doubles series. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole crew, Doug Brown, bye-bye from Park Place Lanes. <laughs>